In this series, we will talk about chart tips and tricks. And the tip for today is to make your point obvious. When we create charts, sometimes we have the tendency to just put out all the information, thinking that that's going to be helpful. And we're also relying on our end users to see what we see, to spot what we think is obvious. But that's not usually the case. The way I see data will be very different from the way you see data, and it will be different from the way other people will see data. If we don't make things obvious, if we don't put enough visual cues in our chart, that point will be easily missed. We also tend to rely on our software too much and we leave a lot of the default settings. So let's take a look at an example. So here's an example. Maybe I'm working on a mobile device vendor's data set. So I'm going to put my very generic title up there. Looking at the date fields, it looks like we have date, we have vendor, we have market share. So I can probably create a line chart. So let me right click drag date, use a date axis. So in here, I'm going to use month and I'm going to pull in my market share. And it looks like we have a vendor field, so let's use that in our marks card. Again, the tendency is for us to use whatever the default is, and possibly we will be putting this in our caller. So what can we see from this chart? Well, not much. It is a little bit of a mess. There's nothing that stands out. It is very colorful, and it's not very obvious what the point is. If we take a look at vendor, let's right click, describe, Vendor has 72 members. None of the default palettes that Tableau has has 72 callers. So this also means that some of the callers are being reused. So in this case, probably not a great chart. But how many of us have actually presented this chart before? So how can we make this better? Well, let's start with caller. Caller is a very powerful pre-attentive attribute. Pre-attentive means pre-attention, before attention. So it can catch attention even if we're subconsciously not looking at it. If we see something, if we scan something and there's a different color somewhere, we tend to navigate towards that. Our attention tends to go to that particular one that has a different color. So we can take advantage of that. So let's try to adjust this. So in here, for example, our point is we want to highlight Nokia's performance. Well, we can make Nokia different. So regardless of the other lines that are in this particular chart, the attention goes to Nokia. We can do this using different methods, but let's use set. So in here, let's create a set on vendor. So create set. So for set, there are actually just two values. It's an in value or an out value. In value are all these dimension members or dimension values that match that condition. In this case, we're just going to statically add Nokia into the set. In here, let's search for Nokia. And let's click OK. So in here, instead of vendor being in the caller, we're going to use vendor set into the caller. Now, naturally, because set by default only has two different values, you have in and out, it will have collapsed everything else under out. We can always expand this again by putting vendor back into the detail. So in here, let's take our vendor, put that back into the detail. So now it stands out. It's, is it better than the previous one? It is a little bit better, but we can do more. So in here, what we're going to do is we're going to mute some of the colors. So we do have a dark gray. It's a little bit dark. We can mute that a little bit more and make the other color stand out a little bit more. So in here, let's double click on the color legend. For out, we're going to make this a little bit more gray. And then for in, we're going to use a color that commands attention. So usually these are the warm, bright colors. So in our default colorblind palette, we do have a dark brown slash orange color. And again, this is a bright enough color that will command attention. So let's use that for our in. And again, our out will be just more of a muted gray color. Let's click OK. So now this is what it has. We can also adjust additional attributes. We don't have to adjust just color. If it helps to adjust some other attribute, for example, size, then we can take advantage of that. In here, I'm going to take vendor set back to size. By default, though, what happens is it takes the two values. You have in and out, and it's going to be alphabetical. The value that appears first will by default have the thinner mark, and the one that follows will have a thicker mark. So we can just adjust this. We can, we can reverse the size. So let's double click on the size legend. And in here, we can just reverse. 
we can just adjust how thick it is as well and click on apply. So we may still adjust this a little bit more. I think this is a little bit thick, so we'll make this a tiny bit thinner. Now, in addition to this, we can clean this a little bit more. So some of the things that maybe we can start adjusting, removing the grid lines, adjusting the title, maybe adding some subtitle in here, and even adding some annotations. So let's try that out. Let's start by removing the grid lines. So under Format, Lines, and in here, we're going to set the grid lines to None. It may not be so obvious, but by default, it may show None right now. However, under Rows, you're going to see that there is a, a faint gray line. So we can simply just reselect None, and then it will remove the grid line. So let's close this. Now let's adjust the title. So in here, if I want people to pay attention to the Nokia performance, then I probably should put that in the title. So in here, we can just say something like Nokia had a drastic market share drop that started, let's take a look, that started around in 2012. And in here, we can also take advantage of pairing the colors. If I'm talking about Nokia and I have a different color for Nokia, I can use that same color in my title. What it does is it actually helps whoever is seeing it make the connection. So in here, we're just going to say Nokia, make this a little bit more bold, and we can change the color to match the color that we've used in the line chart. So in here, like that, and apply. So now, just one look with the chart, we know what this chart is all about. It's all about Nokia, and it's all about that drastic drop in market share. We can also add some subtitles if it's appropriate for your presentation. So in here, let's double click on the title again, and let's add, at its peak, Nokia had more than 40% market share. In 2019, it had, let's take a look, about 1%. So let's make this font a little bit smaller because it's meant to be a subtitle. It's meant to provide just additional context. So in here, maybe let's make that a little bit small. So again, at this point, looking at it, we have an idea already what it's talking about. We can also take advantage of annotations. So in this case, I can take a look at the peak and that's the peak of Nokia. So we can right click, annotate, annotate this particular mark. And we can just say, this is the peak. We can just say Nokia's peak. And we can leave the month if we want to. Let's take a look at what that looks like. So Nokia's peak. June 2011, market share is 41%. And we can do the same thing and add another annotation towards the end. So in here, click on that, right click, annotate, annotate that mark by this particular date, the market share has declined. So you may also be asking the question, why are we leaving all these other lines in here? We can make them thinner, but we can leave them in the background because it provides context. Again, with one look, we know that we're comparing Nokia with a few other vendors. It's not just one other vendor. It's not just two other vendors, but a number of them. Again, having the lines can provide additional context. And that's it. I hope this tip is helpful. I know sometimes we tend to focus on very specific tools, but these are all very important and these are all very transferable skills. So if you are looking for some resources, I do have some recommendations. I really enjoyed reading these books. So if you enjoy reading visualization theory and stories, you may like these books. Storytelling with Data, it's a classic. Good Charts, Effective Data Storytelling, and data visualization. So if you're interested in any of these books, I'll leave some information in the description below. So I hope you found this quick tip helpful and I will see you again next time.